It's Power Back Time on the Gutsy Podcast. Each episode brings you five minutes of condensed inspiration to reclaim the courage and momentum you've unintentionally given away. You've got big things to do, so let's get your power back. Hello, my gutsy friends, and welcome back to another Power Back episode. These are like 20 minute micro coaching sessions to help you get out of your head so that you can start taking action towards your goals, towards your desires, towards the things that keep calling you. Today, we're going to talk about something I know that we all experience, and that is setbacks. You're putting in time, you're putting in effort, you're growing something, you put yourself out there, and sometimes shit just doesn't work. Sometimes you think that a client is going to sign a contract and then they disappear. Sometimes you think that that check is going to come in the mail today and it doesn't show up. Sometimes you put yourself out there and are really vulnerable and it's just not taken well. Look, setbacks are inevitable. These moments of learning, of experience, of what might be considered a failure, which we're not, they're not failures. Because every time something doesn't work out, it's an opportunity to learn and to grow. But coming back from those setbacks, sometimes that can be a little easier said than done. So today we're going to have a real raw conversation about coming back from setbacks. And one of the first things is truly honoring what's going on in the first place. Before we dig into the depths of that, though, I love supporting you in your business, in your mindset, in helping you to streamline and simplify this process as much as possible. And I did that myself for you as well by going to lauraora.com. If you click on the work with me tab, you can now start to really self-identify where you are in your journey and how I can support you best in each stage of the game. So if you're a new or aspiring entrepreneur, I've got uh, an amazing course that'll literally take you a week. It's called Brand Starter. That'll help you get your business off the ground. If you're a growing small business, sometimes you just need to recalibrate, readjust, and what I like to call realign. I've got a group class that is brilliant for coming together with like-minded people to help to simplify, to help to streamline, and to help get re-clear on who it is that you are, what you want to do, and how you want to build your business. And lastly, expanding CEOs. Look, you have big energy. You have big ideas. You're often the person that other people go to first, but who, who is holding the space for you to expand into your next level of business? One of my favorite things in the whole wide world to do is to coach with you alongside you and to create that space for you, to help you see the things that is right in front of you, but you're so in the depths of it, it's hard to see and feel on your own. So you're ready for support. You're ready to grow your business. You're looking for some accountability. You're looking for somebody that can intuitively understand who you are and what you desire in this world and see your vision just as clearly as you can. My friends, I've got you. Go to lauraora.com and book a discovery call. In that call, we can talk about what next steps make sense for you to help you get you closer to achieving your goals. All right, my friends, coming back from setbacks. Look, I just first want to acknowledge that like setbacks suck, right? And what I mean by setbacks is nothing more than you you were moving right along and something happened and it stopped you right? Something happened in your life, a twist happened in your family, Uh, you saw, read, or heard something that tripped you up mentally, Uh, you're moving along in business and something didn't go right, right? Like your, it's momentum followed by like kind of this punch in the face. And sometimes setbacks are small and they're like little bumps in the road. And sometimes setbacks are big and it requires more time and effort and pausing on your side. And I think that that's probably one of the most challenging parts of this, but one of the most profound ways to really move through and come back from a setback is your ability and your willingness to pause. There is so much power in the pause, my friends. This is the the time and opportunity where you are not taking action You're not trying to fix things. You're not trying to play a professional game of whack-a-mole. You are not trying to like navigate the waters while you're, you know, upside down and inside out. No, we are literally just sitting still. And I know that sitting still sometimes is the least comfortable part of all of this. But what happens when you don't give yourself 
an opportunity to pause when something has kind of derailed you, whether it's physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially. When you don't pause, you often go into this very reactive mode, right? This is where you're trying to fix things. You're trying to figure out what happened. You're talking to a hundred different people. You're like going through all of these notions and it's this very kind of unsettled, very unaligned, sometimes frantic energy of making things work. And when that happens, when that type of energy takes over you, this is when you start making decisions that later on you regret. This is where you tend to overcommit things. This is where you tend to say things that you didn't actually really mean, but that's what happened in the moment. This is where you freak out and you lower your price because scarcity has popped back in. This is where you start going back to some old habits that you've shifted out of, like answering your email at 11 o'clock at night and being of service. Anytime somebody says, hey, I need you, you're like, yep, I'm doing it. Yep, I'm doing it. Like I can, I can even feel that in my body, right? Like this setback type of thing can really put you in a spiral of trying to and needing to fix things. Or perhaps the opposite is true for you. Perhaps when a setback happens, you shut down, you retreat, you pull away from things and people, you stop trying in your business, your creativity kind of goes out the window and you're just kind of like sitting and doom scrolling for days on end. This is a pause, but like not at all because it's not a pause with intention, it's pause from stopping. Look, we all have our own different tendencies. And I think that's one of the most important things and one of your first um, actionable items today is to recognize what your tendencies are. When things do tend to go off the rails, when something does trip you up, when something does go wrong or set you back, what do you tend to do in those moments? Because if you can build awareness around your tendencies, you have so much more information to work with when it happens again. And I say when, because you are a human and you run a business and you have friends and family and like life happens, right? So it's not a matter of if, but when. So if you can recognize and document, oh, when things start to go kind of wonky, I tend to shut down. When things don't go right, I tend to overcommit. When something sets me back, I go into fix it mode. So I ask you today first, what are your tendencies when things don't seem to be going in your favor? This is really important, okay? Because without knowing this, this is when days and weeks go by, when you get kind of caught in that rut and you're not even sure what's going on and you're like, you know, you come out of it weeks or sometimes months later and you're like, what, what, what just happened? Like, what did I do there? By recognizing your tendencies, you can see it. And when you can see it, you can shift it. So the next thing I want to recommend to you is when a setback happens, don't try to rush through it either. You know, we as humans have this tendency to like, we don't want to feel the uncomfortable. So we keep pushing through. We keep figuring out, we keep our nose down, we, we hustle through something, we commit to something else, we fill up our time, you know, we're, we're doing all this stuff to like anything but feeling the fucking shit. And that's where I'm going to challenge you today, is that when something happens, give yourself a chance to pause first, and two, feel what you need to feel. Because unexpressed emotions like to hang out in your body. And by swallowing your tears or hiding your rage or putting away your frustration, it doesn't actually go away. In fact, it stores itself in your body. And I can tell you, it's like a teapot. Once that there's so much pressure behind it, that shit is going to come out one way or the other. And so by giving yourself intentional time to pause and feel what you need to feel, it's like relieving that pressure valve ongoing. So you're less likely to like have a giant fucking freak out because you haven't felt your emotions for the last eight months. Feeling your emotions is an incredible way to cleanse your body, your mind, and your soul as well. And yes, tears are absolutely one of them. I just had a really good meltdown this week myself. But so is frustration and anger and giving yourself permission to, to 
rage and let this out of your body, throw a temper tantrum, being safe, of course, we always want to make sure that we are being safe to ourselves and to others. But I, I think that being pissed off and needing to scream somewhere got really skewed that now like that's too much or that makes me uncomfortable or I shouldn't want to do that. I fucking scream. Do you know, have you ever sat in your car and just like fucking wailed? Like you want to talk about feeling a lot better. That's a really good way to do it. But feeling what you need to feel, whether that's crying, whether that's anger, whether it's frustration, this gives your body a chance to release that emotion. And when you release that emotion, it gives you the chance to move on sooner and with ease. Now, the trick here is to not get stuck in it though, right? And I don't have a perfect formula for this, so I'm just gonna talk it out loud with you. But let's say that you are super pissed off at something. Something really went off the rails, it it just, it got under your skin. You have expressed the emotion that you needed to express but you know what feels good sometimes? Continuing to talk about it. And I'm going to tell this person, I'm going to tell that person, I'm going to tell the next person. And like, before you know it, like now you've got all these other people like rallying behind you, like, yeah, now we're pissed off too. And like, now you just have like this group of pissed offness. And while sometimes that can be effective in certain ways, you know, when we're trying to advocate for something or make change, that can be channeled in a really healthy way. But what I'm talking about is just general setbacks in your life. If you're just continuously bitching about why this isn't working and how everyone's out to get you and all this crap, guess what you're drawing more of in? So that's why I am am cautious and very transparent with you to say, feel what you need to feel and then let the shit go. The same with sadness, right? Sadness is um, a delicate beautiful emotion that really needs to be nurtured and giving yourself the opportunity to cry it out. And sometimes you don't cry it out in one session. Sometimes you get it out in one and then you, you feel something later and it comes out again and that's okay, right? This is all about releasing. The trick with this one then is to not slip into the, oh, woe is me, to the victim mentality, to nothing is ever gonna work out, right? You can see how very easily in any emotion, you could slip into the extreme version of it. So that's why what I have found very empowering with myself and my clients is we have paused, we have felt what we needed to feel, and now we're gonna make ourselves do something different. And yes, I said, make myself, make yourself. And it's a very kind of like, pick up your boots, do the thing, choose something differently. You gotta put yourself in a different situation and position because unfortunately, And even as much as people in your world love and adore you, no one is coming to pick you up every single time. And this is where you have to become your own best advocate. The one that believes in herself, the one that chooses to put herself in healthier situations, the one that chooses to get up. Okay, I did this. I'm super freaking sad. This really sucked. I'm acknowledging that. But you know what I'm gonna do now? I'm going to choose differently instead of going down that path and beating myself up mentally and telling myself I'm a piece of crap and whatever else you want to say to yourself. I'm not doing that today. Instead today, I'm going to make myself go get a smoothie and sit in the sunshine. Today, I'm going to make myself go outside and take a walk, even though I don't want to take the stupid walk. I know I always feel better after I take the stupid walk, right? Like, you know, this kind of dialogue that you have with yourself, this is where you're starting to like to shift the actions behind what is happening. I'm a big fan of shaking it out. If you're physically able to like move your body, shake it out, go for a walk, put on a really good song and and like dance like a fool. And this conscious choice of doing something doesn't have to be monumental. Notice also I didn't mention anything about getting on your computer. I did not mention getting in your website and tweaking something. I did not mention going on social media and making a post. This has nothing to do with technology, my friends. This has every ounce to do with your physical and energetic being. Now that you have chosen to make yourself do something, now you can consciously choose to reconnect. 
reconnect with music, reconnect by journaling, reconnect by vision boarding, reconnect by taking a bath with your favorite salts, reconnect by talking to a trusted mentor, coach, or guide, reconnecting with your why, right? Because when these things throw us off center, they throw us out of alignment. And this is now the part of the process where you get to come back into yourself, to come back into alignment, to say what is real and what is true. This is a perfect place and time to insert the power back process. And if you're not familiar with that, it's an acronym, A-U-R-A, awareness. I'm aware of my thoughts and my feelings. Something pissed me off, something went off the rails, something really upset me, something didn't go my way. I feel like a turd, ah, okay. I can see that I'm going off the rails here myself. You, unpack it. Where did this come from? What happened? What is the thing that set you off? What is it about it that made you upset? And what are the emotions that you're feeling? This is this part R. Reframe it. What is real and what is true in this moment? I am smart. I am capable. I can make more money. I will get more clients. I, their opinions don't have to affect me. I have figured this out before. And you know what? The solutions are going to come to me again. I have support around me. I have people that I can turn to. And then the last piece is A, aligned action. And this is where you start to come back into your aligned self because you have felt what you needed to feel. You gave yourself space to do it. You're reconnected with your purpose, your vision, your why. And now you get to choose to take action from that space. This, my friends, is the inner work. You hear Me and a million other people talk about doing the work, doing the work, doing the inner work. This is the work. Because if you came to this episode hoping for a magic formula on like how we can just like do this quick thing to get over setbacks, it's just not how it works. But what does work is rewiring your brain. What does work is rewiring the way that you used to do things now to new healthier habits. What does work is building awareness around what is going on and then using these tools to shift out of it and get back into the purpose of what you're doing in the first place. I wish that there was just like a service where you could be like, I'm having a shit day, come fix this for me. And then like it would show up like Amazon, but you know, like in 20 minutes and everything would be magically better. Unfortunately, that is not the way that things work and actually not unfortunately. Because that would, that would rob us from the ability to shift our own minds, to take our own power back, to recognize our innate worth and our deep sense of connection to self and the world. And I know in those moments, it doesn't feel awesome, right? Like I've experienced more setbacks than I could probably even count right now. But I can also tell you that with every setback, there's an opportunity to learn, to grow, to shift, to reconnect, to pivot even. Setbacks may feel like the world is ending in the moment, but truly and honestly, it's always either a redirection or a clarity opportunity. So please just know that setbacks doesn't mean, they don't mean that you're failing. Setbacks don't mean that it's all falling apart. Having a setback doesn't mean that you're you have no idea what you're doing and this business idea was dumb in the first place and who were you to, no. None of that, my friend. Setbacks mean that you're a human and you're having a human experience. And this is an opportunity for you to reconnect and rediscover even more about yourself. If something resonated with you today, I would love and appreciate if you could go to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. Tell other listeners what you are taking from the show, what they can experience and expect themselves, and what you took away from today's particular episode. Next week on the Gutsy Podcast on Tuesday, we're going to talk about creating content that actually sells. Imagine that. In the meantime, get social with me, connect with me on TikTok, Instagram, and now Facebook, since things are getting all kinds of lit up over there. You can find me using at that Laura Aura. And as always, until I see you next time, stay gutsy.